today we're flying a Citation 5, and I'd like to talk about the pressurization system and how it all works, how it uh, shows its indications here in the panel. And this is, even though we're in a 5 today, this is essentially the same system that is in the 2, the 5, and the Ultra. When you move into the Encore, uh, the Encore has a digital pressurization system, which is quite a bit different. But uh, for the 2, the 5, and the Ultra, this is what you're going to see that the um, displays and gauges are just number one one mic contact jack center one two five point zero five but uh, it's basically uh, uh, telling you the zero, uh, same information morning. so to start with here looking down the 745 at the cabin controller the way this cabin controller works is we have uh, an inner ring and an outer ring the Say again. Inner ring the 745 is what we use to Jack Center, welcome. set uh, the nothing worse than occasional light shop. cruise altitude. And uh, we typically set it 1,000 feet above our cruise altitude. So right now, we're uh, cruising at flight level 410. Jack Center, Legion 806 at 390. And we've Legion got the Jack Center, welcome, ring set uh, to about 42 or 430, somewhere in there. The idea being that uh, we want the cabin to be pressurized close to max differential, but not at max diff, because uh, that way there's a little bit of wiggle room for the uh, outflow valves to modulate things and, and not be constantly opening and closing. So um, then on the top ring that's labeled cabin, that, that ring there will show what the cabin is, uh, is the cabin pressure is selected to. So in this case, uh, if we're cruising at about four, or I should say if we're um, selecting about flight level 4.2 or 4.3.0 on the aircraft altitude, the cabin is set to about 7,200 or so. Center, global, one, one, seven, Mike, zero, and four, uh, that's zero. what we'd expect out of the cabin altitude. So if we look up here at the um, gauge that shows the differential, we've got one, one, seven, Mike, zero, a small Jack needle center, and a big a needle. Ride. The small needle is showing the differential, and the big needle is showing what the cabin is pressurized to. So even though we've we've basically said that we want uh, about a 7,200-foot cabin, the big needle is indicating that the cabin is pressurized to about 6,900 feet. That very well might be just a little bit of an indication error. If things get a little out of calibration, uh, that, could, that could be happening from... Uh, just uh, a glitch in the cabin selector or in the way that the cabin pressure is being displayed. Um, so it's pretty close there. And then uh, notice that our differential is close to max diff, but not not sitting right at max diff or beyond max diff. So um, that is also what we should be seeing at this altitude. And then the third gauge here, uh, shows the rate of climb for the cabin. And right now it it's showing about a positive 200 foot per minute rate of climb. In reality, the cabin is level. So that is almost certainly just a, a little bit of an indication issue. So now let's suppose we want to go to flight level 450. What we'll do is we'll take the uh, ring and we'll set about 46 or 470 as the aircraft altitude, 1,000 feet above where we're going. And notice that the cabin altitude is now selected to be about 8,000. And we should see just a very subtle uh, increase in the rate of climb of the cabin. So we went up about 100 or 200 feet a minute here, shows the cabin climbing. And what we'll look at here on the, uh, on the cabin pressure gauge is over time, we'll see the um, cabin altitudes start creeping up. Like right now, it's at about 7,000 feet, and uh, the uh, cabin pressure is slowly decreasing, or I should say the cabin altitude is slowly climbing. And the differential should be decreasing a little bit because it's like we're, we're allowing the air to have less pressure in the cabin, but we're staying at the same altitude at the moment. Therefore, the differential becomes uh, less. Something else I'd like to point out with the system here is how to check that everything is functioning correctly after takeoff. 
this is a commonly misunderstood thing when uh, pilots are first transitioning into the aircraft is what what indications it on the uh, after takeoff and climb check it says to check the pressurization system but what are you really checking uh, there's going to be a couple things that we're checking one is, and the primary thing is that we are actually pressurizing the cabin so we want to look and see that the small needle on the differential gauge is showing a differential because if something was going on where uh, Maybe we'd uh, we'd left the uh, the uh, pressure source selector in the ground position. Uh, that would be a reason that uh, the cabin wouldn't be pressurizing, or um, it, you know, just some. I guess there's various valves and things that could fail that would prevent the cabin from pressurizing. So, if for some reason it wasn't pressurizing, we would see a zero differential. The needle, the the little needle, would um, be down at zero. So. If we see that a differential is building as we climb, that is proof that we're pressurizing. So that's the first thing that we want to look for. The second uh, detail we want to look for is that the cabin is showing a rate of climb and the cabin altitude is increasing. That would be uh, related to the cabin rate selector uh, that can be increased or decreased to uh, climb or descend at a faster or slower rate. So for example, this is all an analog system. It's, uh, it's just running off pneumatic uh, pressure and pneumatic uh, measurements. There's, it's not, there's no sensors that are electrical or anything like that. So depending on how things get calibrated or if they get a little out of calibration, sometimes the cabin rate will just be barely climbing. So what can happen is on takeoff, as you climb out, you might be climbing out at 3,000 feet a minute, and uh, the cabin rate of climb is practically zero or, or uh, maybe just 100 feet a minute. The cabin altitude would stay down at the field elevation that you just departed from. And what could happen is your max, or you, your differential would increase and increase until you hit your max differential. And, at that, and then at that point, in order for the system to not overpressurize itself, um, it would maintain that max differential, but it would start climbing at an uncomfortable rate. So you want to make sure that in order to not hit that max different differential too soon, that the cabin is actually climbing on departure. And if it's not climbing, you would use the cabin rate knob to increase the rate of climb. And uh, it's really more art than science there. There's uh, you can just turn it uh, a little bit clockwise until you see a cabin rate that looks good. We've begun our descent into Fort Lauderdale, and I'm hoping to show you how the pressurization system is set up for descent, um, if it's not too turbulent to get a good reading here. Uh, I haven't touched anything since we left our cruise altitude of flight level 410, and we're currently out of about 370 descending. So notice how the cabin altitude is the same as in cruise, but the uh, cabin differential is starting to show less of a differential because the same cabin altitude but a, a lower altitude outside means that the differential is less. In order to set up the uh, system for landing, coming into Fort Lauderdale, that airport's essentially at sea level. We're going to turn this selector all the way down to a pr cabin pressure of 200 feet above the field elevation. So maybe about three or 400 feet on the cabin pressure. Right there. And one way of expressing that, it's, it's really two different, or it's, a, it's two ways of saying the same thing. We could also say that we're commanding the aircraft altitude to be um, flight level 240. Meaning, uh, it would be if we were at flight level 240, that would be at the max diff, um, in order to maintain the cabin pressure of a couple hundred feet above sea level. The idea here being that when we're landing, we don't want to be pressurized. We want the the cabin to um, have a nice, smooth um, cabin pressure as we descend all the way down to landing, and then within 200 feet of landing before we touch down will be at zero differential, so we touch down with zero differential.
if I look up at these other gauges, we'll see a uh, cabin vertical speed of a couple hundred, negative a couple hundred feet per minute, a descent of a couple hundred feet per minute. And let's say I want to increase that. I can turn that rate knob to a higher rate and notice the cabin rate increases its descent. So in this case, it would be pressurizing the cabin more, bringing it down to that lower cabin altitude. In other words, a higher pressure. And if for whatever reason it was too uh, high of a rate of descent in the cabin, it was uncomfortable on our ears, we could bring that to a lower rate in order to uh, make it more comfortable for the passengers. Just like that. We're almost uh, finished with our uh, descent here as far as the cabin pressure goes. Uh, coming out of about 13,000 feet right now, coming into Fort Lauderdale. And uh, just wanted to show how the cabin pressure is almost down to where we have it selected at about two or 300 feet above sea level. It's at about 1,000 feet on the cabin pressure right now. And you can see the differential is getting to be less and less as we descend into the more dense air. And uh, what we always want to do before landing is verify that the cabin pressure is close to the field elevation. We don't want it to be Thanks at all below. And we also don't want it to be drastically one, above zero, because the idea there is that 5, the last there few hundred feet, it's not going to matter to the passengers if right, we're unpressurized because we're, we're going to be on short final and, and not descending very quickly. But if the cabin pressure, for whatever reason, was up a, a 2,000 feet above the field or something like that, it would feel unpressurized the last couple thousand feet. And that could be hard on passengers' ears. Or uh, conversely, if we have uh, a glitch in the system where maybe we've um, something is out of calibration and we've overpressurized the cabin and the cabin is below the field elevation, when we land, the weight on wheels sensors are going to pick up that we've landed and open the outflow valves entirely and the cabin will unpressurize at that point and, and uh, will uh, create a big, it, it'll, it'll go for like, it'll feel like a rapid climb because it's overpressurized to below the field elevation. And uh, we don't want to have passengers feel that either. So uh, that's what we're looking for on every uh, landing and arrival when we check the pressurization. That's what we're looking for is that cabin differential and how it compares to the, or the cabin pressure and how it compares to the field elevation.